This could be good for me Lately I was feeling like I need a perm Hello! So, one of the things that me and Jason have been discussing is basically trying to actually come up with some better frame mounts that are easier to reach. Right now they're in a pipe, kind of hard to get to, so we're going to be doing a lot on this bed. We're going to go ahead and take the bed off. We're going to put new brackets on so we can actually really bolt it a lot easier without having to take a bunch of stuff off long term in the future in case we need to switch to another truck. And try to get that other side skinned with the big brake and that would be the last need for using the bigger brake at this time and then we can use the smaller finger brake for all the inside of the boxes. So I'm going to go ahead and get things unbolted. All right, follow along as we uh, get started today. What we're working with now is the finger brake, and the finger brake is nice because each one of these pieces of uh, metal up here, as you can see, those who know and those who don't, those can get removed and it allows us to actually come in and do more boxing with our folds than the other brake, which is just like a straight brake. So there you have it. So with the last piece you just saw, we folded it over, we set it on the inside here, and everything's working out pretty well. Use some self-tapping screws, and now we're going to go ahead and place it and make sure everything's fitting correctly before the rivets go in. We got the side box on the passenger side pretty much framed out and in a couple more bits of hardware a couple little pieces that we're going to weld on the top but an incredibly large compartment we also got the rear end bent and hanging screwed in just uh trying to work around as to what we're doing still with the tail lights we may be changing that up and then we're just discussing how we're going to solve the interior wall as to where that's going to go. All right, so we got our side skin on. Jason is checking measurements from our corner to our wheel to make sure our bends are consistent on both sides. 
and we just have some basic clamps. He likes working with these clamps more than a lot of welders use those seat clamps, but he loves using just the regular adjustable clamps, which is pretty cool. So whatever works for you to get your stuff held up, but it works perfectly. Jason just hit this with the plasma cutter, working off the same measurements as the other side. Now there's a couple bits that are very helpful for doing the three quarter inch holes. One, this is actually one Jason has very similar to a bi-metal hole saw. I'll try to look that up, get that information put in the description. And then also there's just your traditional step bit. The carbides are the best way to go. And these actually have measurements, uh, listings on them, which may or not show up, but you can kind of see them right there. So it allows you to see like we're doing a three quarter inch hole. Now this is not, you know, the most accurate way, you have one of these this is much more production oriented to make sure things are consistent but I just wanted to show you these two options for doing your holes for the marker lights This is a lot of yummy in a bun. Jason's creating the next big adventure for, uh, we're gonna have to start taking him along with us on all our camping trips, I think. Jason, are you expensive? Can you uh, can you be hired for this type of? Uh... It is possible. Big and yummy. Everything is entirely possible. Now this, this is what lunch is all about here. What is this called again? It's a baked Italian cold cut. Baked Italian cold cut. With yellow mustard. And what's on it? Average man is usually on an Italian cold cut plus yellow mustard. And then it's heated up in the oven. Nice. All right, time to go eat, right? Time to go eat.
So there's two two 